Hi, I'm Peggy Farron. Welcome to the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Connie, Constance Meyer is our guest today, and we are going to talk about, she is traveling in an RV and photographing new and exciting places, so that sounds really interesting. That's what we're going to talk about on today's Understand Photography Show. Uh, the Understand Photography Show is first a podcast, so if you're wondering why we don't have any visuals, that's why. You can listen to us in the car. It's easy. Uh, we, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. Or what, however you listen to podcasts, you can find the Understand Photography Show. We come out on Fridays at 4 p.m., and then we also put the behind the scenes on YouTube and on Facebook, 4 o'clock Fridays, Eastern Time. Our... It's January 7th, so about a month from now, our Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography class begins. And that is an online class, but it's different from most online classes because it's an interactive class. That's why it has a start date. You start on January 7th. We're going to teach in the very first class how to shoot in the manual mode. Once you understand that, everything else gets easier. So you're going to have support from me, you're going to have homework that's going to help you really understand the concepts and the homework is very specific. It's not like go out and photograph something and let me look at it. It is take this orange, put it here, these are your settings. It's very specific because I want you to really understand what's happening. So for four weeks we just build on that. So January 7th, join us, you will really like it. Anyway, Constant Meyer is Constance Meyer is kind of a local person. She doesn't live too far from here, so she hadn't, didn't have as far to travel as a lot of our guests. She has been on the show before, episode number 86, and we talked about photographing the Everglades from a canoe. So go back and watch that or listen to that episode. It was really good. Connie retired last year and has been going around the United States in an RV. So welcome. Thank you, Peggy. Welcome I'm back. Happy to be back. And, you, <laughs> Good to see and you. you've only been back one oh. week. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we've been on the road for five months. So I don't travel full time, but um, I travel for several months at a time. Five months is a long time. Yeah, it is. It You're is. officially a snowbird. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm back for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good, too. <laughs> All right, so tell me just this last trip, where'd you go? So we, on this trip, boy, we're having a hard time getting west of the Mississippi River because there's just so many things to see out there. Um, we went up uh, the coast, uh, the southeast coast, Georgia, and south North Carolina, and across Pennsylvania, Ohio. I have family in Indiana, so Indiana is always going to be a... Um, a mm. point that we stop at and then up into Wisconsin beautiful Door County and came down Iowa and uh, Missouri Arkansas and it um, spent some time on the Panhandle which has been <sighs> one of my photography uh, goals so well, you we know how I that. feel about that area exactly, right exactly <laughs> yeah I finally I <laughs> yeah finally got to see it so and photograph some of it until that tropical storm came through and then we had to evacuate so <laughs> oh. that was we were we had just gotten to Fort Pickens, which is near Pensacola, and that storm was, was coming in off of Mexico, and we were watching it. We were supposed to be there six days, right on the beach. We were parked right on the oh. beach, and uh, we had to leave three days early, so got cut short, but um, we'll be back <laughs> at yeah. some point. Wow. So, yeah, so stuff like that happens, and you have to... You know, you have to figure out where you're going to go and, and uh, how you're going to get away from that um, situation. And, and huh. Yeah, I, I know. Right? think about, like, storms and things yeah, like that. Yeah, we lost an RV in Hurricane Irma, so we don't want to do it again. Oh, you did? Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I we, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago. So, oh, jeez. Um, anyway, uh, but anyway, now we're, we're back down here in South Florida. Okay, so you retired, and that was what kind of... Yeah. got you to say, hey, I want to see mm -hmm. the United States. Well, more, yes, definitely the travel, but more importantly, we, we sold our home in Miami, and we bought the RV um, to live in full time. So we it, live It's pretty in, big, or? 32 feet. Um, is that What big? is it, about thir 320 square feet? Oh, my gosh. And so, you and your partner live in there, mm -hmm. so there are two of you. Two people living there. Do you there. have the animals, too? No. 
Okay. No, we we um, we lost all our animals before all that. So, but we were prepared to travel with a cat at least. But um, he passed away right, you know, right as all this was happening. But he didn't anyway. want to live in an RV. He didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we lived there full time, and and we spend our winters in Chukaluski Island. That's where we, that's our home base. So and that's we, here, basically in the Everglades. The 10,000 islands, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're there from, you know, November until whenever we decide to start traveling again. And uh, um, next year we'll leave a little bit earlier, like in May, because mm -hmm. um, we'll be going out west and um, come back in November. And, and, uh, and that's, wow. yeah, that's, that's the way it is for now, and maybe for the next five, 10 years or whatever. All yeah. right, so let's talk about just living in an RV and tra and traveling, <laughs> not just living in one, but you're and traveling would, in one. Yeah, yeah, living in one, I can say, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. But because you can like have stuff around the outside. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But when you're traveling, you have to be self-contained inside. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Everything we own is in our RV. You don't have a storage Everything. space? Well, I do, but um, that's, that's for the art festivals. So I keep my prints and my tent here in Naples at public storage because I don't do art festivals on the road. Okay. Right? So, um, and I'm not selling, I don't have prints with me to sell. I have to do that online. So I store all of that here because okay. when I come back in the winter, then I do the art festivals and all that. But, um, so, but everything else we own is, is with us. Wow. And um, it's amazing how much you can pack in these things. Uh, what, the, what we have is a fifth wheel and you can store a lot of stuff in a fifth wheel. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we went from a 1600 square foot condominium to a 300 square foot living space and we don't miss it. We don't miss the space. Seriously? Seriously. You get on each other's nerves? No. We have, <laughs> well, maybe I get on yeah. nerves. But, <laughs> but we have a separate, we have, you know, there's privacy. We have a separate room. You know, you have a bedroom, you have a bathroom and a living area, and they're all separate areas. And um, so there's privacy. But um, it, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that, and this thing is on wheels, that we're traveling down the road with, with everything we own. And, and a lot of people do it. It's not like we're doing anything new, but, um, but it's just, it, it, it commands a lot of respect, I guess, when, you're, when your home is, is something that you're traveling and you have to really maintain it and um, be willing to put up with all of that that comes with RVing. So it's, I mean, I, this isn't an RV, RV interview, but there are a lot of RV resources out there for your listeners who might be interested in doing that. Well, um, I, I don't even know how it came across my you know, my world, because what you're doing terrifies me because you have a big pickup truck, I guess. To yeah, carry. we pull it, yep. So, and then you have to, I can't imagine driving something like that. It's, I know, right? It, it asked you, if you had asked me this two years ago, I said, I don't think I'd do that, but, but there we are doing it, and it's not that difficult. <laughs> well, I looked, I don't even know how it, I probably it was on YouTube, but they had a woman like my age mm -hmm. who was traveling alone, but she yep. had like a, you know, the size van that the florists yep. use, and yep. she was living in it and traveling yeah. in the United States. And I thought, that sounds fun. So I yeah. started reading, a, or, well, actually, I started, once you do it, then YouTube knows that you watched a video. Right. And van life is the tagline. Okay. So hashtag van life. Mm -hmm. And there are thousands oh, of videos. It's amazing. With advice, and I thought, oh, this sounds so fun. And then I watched what I hate about van life. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you about the, the the main thing I remember that made me turn me off the most was mechanical issues. Oh yeah, for sure. If you're not a handy person going into this lifestyle, you have to become one. Um, and that that's you know, it, photography. It's the same thing with photography. Look at it. It may sound silly, but YouTube is a game changer. I mean. You can go out there and buy a camera and learn how to use it watching somebody's videos or lear learn how to use Photoshop, this mm -hmm. sort of thing. So YouTube is a game changer for RVing lifestyle. And um, we have learned so much just from the research we've done on that. So we have to, it, it's like this, if you're going to sink money into something like that, 
it's like buying a really, really expensive camera. If you're going to spend money on that, you got to learn how to use it. Yeah. And uh, with the RV, if you're not willing to um, at least figure out how to uh, repair or maintain the basic stuff, mm -hmm. it's going to be one frustration right after the other, and it's going to get really expensive. So, um, so we've learned how to take care of things. For the most part, I mean, there's some things we can't do, yeah. like weld. <laughs> we had to have a piece welded on our frame because it broke off the suspension, and that needed to be done like right there. And um, so, you, were you like stranded, or we had just gotten to a campground and we were uh, looking at the suspension? I'm thinking there's something not right there between the wheels um, and it didn't look right so we called got on the phone with the company and they said check this one thing out this hanging mm -hmm. bracket and I looked at it and it had completely sheared off from the frame right mm -hmm. so where it's welded it just came right off and um, so we had to we couldn't drive it we had to call a, a mobile um, maintenance person to come somebody with a welding machine to fix this before we could take it down the road. And uh, that, that's stuff that happens because these things are not made that well. It's not, I mean, our truck is made 10 times better than our RV. Okay. I mean, our truck is safer than the RV as far as traveling. Um, but uh, uh, so you have to, you know, you have to realize what it is that you're, you're um, living in, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a it's a it's a foam box pressed between a couple of laminate pieces <laughs> and on an aluminum frame, and that's what you're traveling in. Wow. And things break, and um, you know, you just have to you have to be on top of all of that. You know, when you buy a new home, you know, you want to be able to repair things on your own, or mm -hmm. you're going to be spending a lot of money on plumbers and electricians and this sort of thing. Um, but when you buy a home, you don't expect to have to go up on the roof every three months and inspect it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you don't, you know, when you turn on a faucet or you're using the bathroom, you don't think about where all that water is going because you don't have to deal with it anymore. But that's not the case with an RV. So. That was the other thing was the bathroom yeah. that people we didn't were, like. We have a full bathroom, not in a van. You're not going to have that. But we, we have a, we, I, I've lived in apartments smaller than my but you have to pump RV. it out or something, right? Or yeah, RVs have holding tanks, yeah. yeah. So you have to <laughs> deal with that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So those are things you have to deal with. And um, you know, the like a camera. The cheaper the camera is, the less maintenance, the less you have to think about it, right? Yeah. Um, but the more you put into something like that, like a van would be great. A van is like a car. It's a truck. You, yeah. You're safe in it, and. You know, it's not going to break down like a bigger, you know, boxy RV. Yeah, yeah. Will have its own issues, but um, what are know. some of the other issues that have you had? Any other things that are just like difficult that you're like, Ugh, this is difficult. Well, I, yeah, you know, I'm sure you know uh, your photographers out there would be interested. If I'm traveling, what about connectivity? Um, that is a really frustrating thing. And you can fix that if you're willing to, to pay for the hardware and, and the service. You can have decent connectivity if you're willing to pay for that. Like, right? Is it like way more expensive than we do paying for it at home? I, I think so because you know you're going to areas where you you know you don't uh, you're going to remote areas. So are they that, using a cell phone signal then? Um, is that how you connect? That's how it's if, not not like with a modem and a Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. Depends on where you are. I mean, oh. we we go to campgrounds where they offer Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. But it's not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to be able to upload a video as well or stream, you know, you know your movies or whatever as easily because it's usually pretty slow. Uh -huh. um, so if you want that high-speed connectivity, you have to you have to bring it with you. Um, I think people buy jet, they have jet packs that you can get through Verizon and some of these other, um, you know, whatever your cell service company is. And, and uh, you can pay for that on the road. But it's, you know, I mean, it gets, it, it, I don't, you know, I don't feel I need it because I'm not uploading videos every week. Like you would have to, you would have to invest in, yeah. in some things if you were traveling to do what you're doing here. Yeah. But, um, uh, the only issue I ran into, other than just not being connected, is um, from my website I sell prints. And I'd 
was selling prints while I was on the road. And all of a sudden I had to upload these, these uh, files um, to my print shop um, in Miami and uh, I you know I would be trying to communicate with the customer and say this might take me a few extra days to get to this but you know other than that um, you know the frustration of just not being connected it wasn't that much of an issue because yeah. you know do you feel like you detoxed a little off the uh, off the Devices? Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. for sure, right? Yeah, I mean, I, we, when you're, I mean, I'm used to going out in the Everglades for a week or two at a time and have no connection whatsoever. Okay, so you are, a, you not were, you weren't me. addicted anyway. No. <laughs> no, because you know what? You, you you're living in your home, and you wake up and you're in a beautiful location every day. You you know you're like somewhere new. And that, that becomes so addicting that you don't think about all that other stuff. That, yeah, you know. oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, how, how did you decide where you were gonna go? Was it because of photography spots? Yeah, so I, you know, so I, do, I travel with my spouse who is not a photographer. So okay. this is not a photography trip per se. You're just exploring. We're, we want to see it all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and, it, and actually this trip has been more of a history lesson than anything because we, we, um, we love learning about the places that we travel to and, and um, you know, so a, a lot of, you know, the sightseeing that we've done is not really nature photography friendly, you know, when we're, we're going to cities and, and you know, we want to spend time um, in the museums and just learning yeah. the history of the areas where we are. So the nature photography was forefront in some places, you okay. know, that we went to. Like I really wanted to go uh, Jekyll Island, the Boneyard oh. Beach was something that I really I wanted. I want to go there. I've never been there. Well, just make sure you go there at the right time. <laughs> I was there one day and it wasn't the right time. So oh. it just, you know, it wasn't what you expect, right? Um, so it's it's... It, it's like, wow, if only I had maybe three or four more days that I could just stay here and, and concentrate on photographing this beautiful place. But um, And that's a drawback from traveling, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Any kind of traveling. Exactly. Like I had that drawback. I went to Italy, and it's like I didn't have time to, I, I couldn't be where mm -hmm. I wanted to at the right time, yeah. and the, you know. And you're in so many beautiful places, you know? It's like you have to kind of pick and choose, mm -hmm. you know, what part of Italy you really want to spend time in. And, and it was like that for, for me as well. I mean, I think for any photographer, um, you do your best work when you're in familiar, you know, surroundings. I agree. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm used to photographing in the Everglades, and, yeah. and that's, that's how I learned photography. That's what I know. So. To me, going out there and traveling was very challenging, and I had a few places where I really wanted to spend more time at, and um, uh, you know, I just we wanted to see other things. So, um, if if it was just me and it was me going out to, to photograph and build my portfolio, uh -huh. I would do it very differently. You okay. Know, just pick some locations, pick the right times to be there, fall colors everywhere we went. Um, would have been perfect in the fall, but we weren't there you in the, the fall. Wrong. You, were, you were in the panhandle we were back, in the fall. Yeah, we were back down in Florida when all those colors started changing, and you're looking on Instagram, and you're like, oh, I was there, but it didn't look like that, you know? Anyway. Um, well, I know, because I traveled pretty extensively this summer with non-photographers, and we didn't, I didn't come yeah. home with hardly any good pictures. Yep. I mean, you know, I yeah. came home with memories. Yeah. So, exactly. But you did squeeze in the time for photography. Oh, yeah. So, so what was your first photography stop? Um, well, I, you know, we spent some time in Florida before we left Florida. I mean, it takes forever to get out of South Florida and yeah. get, get up you know, across the border. But um, we went into, we want to spend some time in St. Augustine. Um, so before we left Florida, uh, we stayed there and I thought, I want to go to um, uh, the Washington Oaks area and the Marine Land area where you know you get these photographs of the beach with the rocks and that sort of thing so that was my first stint and then uh, and then Jekyll Island was a little further north of there 
but um, but I had my my sites. I had some predilections. I I wanted to photograph Lake Michigan, okay. up in Wisconsin, and um, there were waterfalls that I knew I was going to be able to access easily um, in Iowa of all places, and really? then also uh, northern Ar Arkansas, and we were going to spend extensive time in these places, okay. and. Um, Every single waterfall that I had easy access to was dried up. Oh. <laughs> there was always a little trickle of water coming oh. down. So, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, things like that. But, um, uh, but Lake Michigan was beautiful. I got to spend some quality time there on the shoreline. Iowa ended up being a, a, just a pleasant surprise. Um, I could spend more time there. In now, when you were planning, did you say we're going to spend five days here, four mm -hmm. days here, and yep. did you follow your schedule pretty pretty uh, well? Yeah, because we, I had to make reservations in advance. I mean, every oh, place. Oh, for the campgrounds. Mm -hmm. oh, exactly. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I'm yeah. thinking you're free when you're. I know. But you're if right. we were in a van, it would be a different story. <laughs> yeah, because all these people, you know, when I got sucked into the YouTube videos, they're like half of them, are like you can park at Walmart overnight if you get desperate. Yeah, you, can. you know. <laughs> Well, you we could. Oh, you yeah. could too. Now, you know, disclaimer on that because some Walmarts don't allow you to do that. Okay. But, but yeah, I mean, one thing that we do, um, and you know, again, if you know, if, if people are out there interested in, in getting into this lifestyle with their cameras, there's this. Um, I want to say company. It's not a company. It's a, a club, I guess, uh, where you can become a member. It's called Harvest Host. And when you were talking about your home exchange, it kind of reminded me of this. But Harvest Host is people that have farms, wineries, um, museums, uh, just kind of points of interest that are rural, in rural settings. They offer space for you to park your RV. And so we, <laughs> so we go, so we'll plan a trip and we'll say, okay, we can stay at a Harvest Host on our way to the next destination. And so we plan those in our trip. And um, you can stop and spend a night. Sometimes you can spend a couple nights if you want. But you park at, um, on a farm, um, like alpaca farms. Oh, and, how cool uh, is that? <laughs> creameries, like that, you know. Um, we've, uh, wineries are our favorite. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll spend the night there. And the, <sighs> the idea is that when you go there, they'll let you park free, but uh -huh. you buy something from them. Okay. So, of course, they never end up being free, They, you know, because we always end up buying a bottle or two of wine. But um, those are just really cool experiences. I because would think you're, so, too. Yeah. You're boondocking, which means you're not connected to anything. There's no electricity or no water. I never hookup. knew what boondocking meant in my whole life until just now. Oh, my God. You're <laughs> learning something new. <laughs> and we haven't even talked about photography yet. I and, know. And all these... But yeah, so I mean, there's there. So, um, you know, if you're in a van, which is a, a much smaller profile than what we have, you can go just about anywhere. Um, you can park. Uh, when we were in uh, Savannah, um, we stayed at a campground outside of the city, but you know, we we went into the city, and there were people pulling trailers parked on the road along. You know, parked wow. just like a a, a normal um, car would park. Wow. Uh, travel vans, you see them all over because they can park anywhere they want. So that's an advantage. Um, but our style of travel is we want to park and then use our truck to go wherever we want, mm. which is usually wilderness areas and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's how we get around. That's cool. Yeah. So, I like uh, it. but yeah, so boondocking is part of boondocking. Boondocking. <laughs> boondocking. Boondockers adventures. Boondock. Just Google it, and you'll find all kinds of videos. Oh, I never there. even knew what that word meant. That's so yeah. funny. So, where do you store your gear, and do you worry about it getting stolen? Um, no, I don't. I don't worry about it getting stolen because you know I keep everything locked up, obviously. But uh, you know. I photographed from a canoe, as you know, and we talked um, when you talked to me the last time. When I have all my camera equipment in the boat, it's stored in my Pelican cases, mm -hmm. waterproof, shockproof, so that's where they stay in the RV. So those are my storage units. And, um, and I have 
places that I can put them that they're not in the way. Okay. And when we're traveling down the road and that thing is, you know, moving around back there, it's like an earthquake, um, the camera equipment is perfectly because safe. Because you've got that good, those good cases. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. So, I didn't even think about that, that you need to really protect them because mm. of the earthquake going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, it is an the earthquake. An earthquake, <laughs> yeah, down the road. But, um, uh, I don't worry about my stuff getting stolen because I have it insured anyway, but, uh, you know, I mean, we don't, if you were boondocking in very, very remote places, I mean, terrible things do happen, um, you know, it, 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 that's one, one thing that could happen is you, you could, you know, somebody could break in and, and steal your stuff, but, um, but we, you know, we generally don't stay in, you stay in this. Um, campgrounds are pretty we're in safe. Campgrounds that yeah. are relatively safe and uh, pretty safe, and um, so I, I never, never really worry about that. So, how long do you generally stay in a place? Um, I, you know, I mean, you covered a lot of ground in yeah, five months. The longest we stayed um, in a place, it, actually, that ended up changing because. Um, Vivian, my my spouse, broke her ankle, so we ended up having to change our thing, our itinerary, and spend a little more time in one place. Um, she broke her ankle. Fly you fishing on the, in the, on the Arkansas road. River. Yeah. Wow. But, so that's the other thing to consider when you're traveling in an RV. You is don't have a local doctor. We had to. Had, she had to have surgery. All that. Oh stuff. my gosh. Yeah. So it. We had to stay there longer than we intended, and the campground we were at. Um, we couldn't stay any longer than we were because they were all booked up. And that's the other thing is these parks, they fill up so fast that if you don't have a reservation way in advance, you're not going to get in. You can't just drive. And right. Exactly. Oh, wow. So, um, so that kind of changed things. Uh, but normally we would stay maybe one week at the most in one place. Okay. And then most places three or four nights. And so how do you how do you figure out what to photograph when you have such a short period of time? Do yeah. you do a lot of re do you spend a lot of time researching? I do, and okay. I um, there's some <coughs> uh, since my my main interest when I am traveling is landscape, okay. you know, waterscape, landscape. The the wildlife, I you know maybe next year I'll get more into the wildlife because we'll be going out west. Um, we might have more more. Um, uh, wildlife opportunities but on this trip it was more landscape so I have found some really good uh, YouTube videos websites uh, photographers who offer a lot of information on locations and um, you know Instagram love it or, or hate it uh, I used Instagram a lot to find um, locations okay and I would just kind of store pictures for certain locations and I'd like, okay, so this is an area that I think I want to... Do wanna... people tell you the location on Instagram? Um, yeah, a lot of people do. Oh, they do, okay. Some don't. I mean, some places, you know, yeah. they're, they're very, um, you know, secretive about that. Yeah. But, uh, but you can glean a lot of good information even from, from that. But, um, and I even contacted pho photographers. Okay. Um, you know, and... and uh, uh, and in fact, photographers that offer like tours or workshops, I contacted them and said, you know, I might be in your your area at this time. Are you available and this sort of thing? Um, so, but did you hire anybody? Ever? I I didn't uh, because the one photographer that I was going to hire was in uh, actually northern Alabama, and we ended up not going there. Oh. So, but. Um, but photographers uh, that I have met on the road, and uh, they'll, I'll, they'll give you some tips on where to go and that. So I kind of relied a little on that, relied a lot on my internet research. And, and, Did you um, do Google Earth or oh anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and actually, oh. uh, you know, traveling in an RV, that we rely on that heavily for finding our campgrounds and the roads oh, we yeah. want to. Because there's certain roads, certain campgrounds we can't get into, um, so we have to really, <laughs> we have to really research our routes and, and um, locations, so campgrounds and that sort of thing. Wow. But uh, but yeah, but the research that goes into like where am I going to photograph was it, it's a lot of fun to do that, and you're trying to figure out you know if we camp here. I can drive to this point and that point and all that, and you end up driving all over the place. But um, but it was really it was really the um, unexpected uh, locations that I ended up 
getting my best shots, I think. Ah. And yeah, so um, I, I, was, I was talking about Iowa. You would think, Iowa, what, what do you I do? Never, I, don't Iowa. Know, I don't know anything about Iowa. <laughs> I know. I didn't either until um, we learned that there's this area up there called the Driftless and it's where the glaciers, the glaciers didn't, didn't uh, um, how would you say, slide across that area uh -huh. and level everything out. So there's a part of Iowa that's very hilly and, and I wouldn't say mountainous, but you have a lot of ravines and a lot of, a lot of rivers and, and this sort of thing, natural rivers. Okay. And, and um, just beautiful. And this is on the eastern side, northeastern side. So we spent about nine days there and just, drove everywhere and I'm like you know I could spend a month or two up here the farmland it's kind of like Tuscany in some ways wow. yeah and um, I got up it was the last morning we were there and I had found this lookout point earlier that overlooked the farmland and it was that classic uh, layers of you know oh, hills, hills rolling and... hills with some farms speckling oh. the scene right and uh, and I knew that where that lookout tower was, um, and it was only a few miles away. And I got up, I got up, it was like five in the morning, it was still dark, and I'm sitting there drinking my coffee, and I open up the window and I see this heavy fog. I thought, oh, this is gonna be cool. So I got everything together and went up to the lookout tower and, and just spent two hours or more photographing the fog scene, oh, rolling over the hills and, and all that. that. And, Loved it, you know, and so I thought, yeah, I could come back here with the fall colors. That and does sound pretty. Yeah. I, I love, I mean, I just don't get up early enough. I, well, actually, I do get up <laughs> early enough, but I get up early, I do my thing and go to work, you know what I mean? But yeah, when we were in Tuscany, the our, you know, Stefano lives there, right? Our, my co-leader, and he was even, he was so, we keep teasing, everybody's still teasing on Facebook. He was like, this is Epic, <laughs> because epic. The, the fog was so cool. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And when that happens, it's like you're so excited, and you you know you want to get as much as you can out of that, you know. So that happened a couple times while I was we were traveling, but it didn't. But that happen was just everywhere. a fluke, though, right? You yeah. just happened to be there just at the right time, exactly. and you had planned already to get up at five o'clock and do that. Okay. Well, you know, I I wasn't even planning on going out that morning because oh, it, it was got. it was because I didn't. You you know the conditions and all of that it has to be just right and uh, I didn't expect there to be any anything to, to photograph that morning and um, and then when I saw the fog that just kind of changed it because I you know I mean and you go all by yourself out in the dark in the morning for yeah yeah, yeah. I'm used to doing that um, even to strange places yeah I mean I yeah, sort of, sort of, kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I, what, what I would tend to do is kind of scope out the areas and, and think, okay, this might be a good location to go. And then after that, it's, it's just a matter of um, do I feel safe enough to go there? And, yeah, it feels all right to me, so okay. yeah, I'm good with that. But, um, but you know, it, it's funny because, uh, I, I, you know, I can go anywhere and try to photograph, and, and you're probably the same way. If I'm in a location that wouldn't be like maybe the first choice, mm -hmm. it's like I gotta figure out if there's something here that I, I can just kind of grab hold of and, and try to create some art from it. And okay. that's really what it's about. And I do that in the Everglades all the time. I go out there and try to figure out what you know what I can photograph, and you know, and and um, you know, and hopefully you know something comes out of that and and that's kind of how I've always approached my photography is try to make the most of it and it's always in these unassuming locations that okay. I end up photographing and uh, you know it's kind of funny because we're planning on going out to uh, Glacier and Yellowstone and the Tetons next year and we're gonna come back through Nebraska and, and then back to Florida and, and guess which part of that trip I'm most excited about? Going to Nebraska <laughs> because there's areas in Nebraska that are just um, you know very interesting looking to me and I thought everybody photographs the Grand Tetons yeah. I mean, that's easy right yeah. that's an easy thing um, but I want to photograph something that's a little more challenging and um, something I can create something from and so Iowa, 
Wisconsin, those were places that ended up being really good for me. It's funny because, you know, of course I'm from Michigan, mm -hmm. as are you. Right. And uh, Michigan did a really good job of marketing for a long time as a, you know, I remember when I was growing up, it was Winter Wonderland yeah. and then it was Great Lakes State and it's always been a vacation state and it's mm -hmm. always been so beautiful and everybody knows that. Yeah. I don't think Wisconsin did as well in the marketing department, but it's coming now. I'm starting to yeah. see all these photographers are going to Wisconsin because yeah. it pretty much looks the same as Michigan. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's got some amazing places. I mean, it's so pretty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you don't have. I mean, we we spent well. Another place we spent a week at was Door County, which I never. It was never on my radar screen, and we just when we were researching the trip, we started looking at these places and thought, well, this looks kind of interesting. A lot of interesting history there, and it's on Lake Michigan. Michigan. And um, last year we were in the state of Michigan and I photographed Lake Michigan on the east side, right? Yeah. So this year we were on the west side, on Wisconsin, and it's totally different. It's a very different lake. Um, so it was a whole new experience and it, it just, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that um, as a photographer that just really you know motivates me to you know to, to travel is there's so many interesting locations that you never would have thought of yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. and and you just come across them by just, like when you planned this trip it was okay we want to see these you know we want to learn the history we mm -hmm. want to see these spots but these like Wisconsin and stuff. How did how did you? Well, come up? you know how it is when you're when you're Google searching. You just kind of go down these rabbit holes and you find these things that lead to something else and then something else and and you you start you, you just kind of learn about these areas okay. and you think yeah there's some pretty pretty and you and you start looking at the images that are coming out of there. There's photographers in Door County and um, we actually went to a couple of the galleries up there. And and uh, you know you look at their work and you see yeah there's some there's some pretty beautiful areas there that um, you know you can easily get to, and so uh, so that's yeah so planning the trips is just as fun as the trip I think. Okay, that's yeah. interesting because I get tired of the planning. <laughs> it's yeah, just, yeah, I guess maybe when I'm retired <laughs> and I don't have a oh, full-time job to, to yeah, do on right. top of the planning on yeah. top of the everything else maybe it would be more fun but for me it just yeah. seems like so much work. It is. It, it, it is a lot of work and you can overdo it. Um, I mean a part of me is like just go you know let's just go but I'll tell you when <laughs> when you're when you're when it's in our situation, we're traveling with our home. So, yeah. you know, I mean, we've been in some situations we shouldn't have been in as far as like getting down the wrong, turning, making the wrong turn and getting down the wrong road and, and, and you not being turn able to big turn thing around. Yeah, or if we can't turn it around, what do we do then? And what and, did you do? Oh my God, I got us. <laughs> in, Let's hear the story. <laughs> oh, there's I, <laughs> lots of stories, but. Um, yeah, I got us on, I made the wrong, you know how you're looking at Google and uh, it's telling you to make a turn, but you kind of think it's this turn, but it's not, it's the one, oh, the yeah, next one, you I've know, we do. and so I did that and we ended up in this mall, mall parking lot, and the parking lots and malls are very, you know, sharp turns and all that. I got us into this turn that the only way we could get out was to back it up and and uh, you know negotiate around all the cars and all that and and then figure out a way to get out without doing that again so we had to go all the way to the other end of this mall and go through the back because you figure semi trucks come in there with their yeah. you know their their unloading and loading in the back so we had to go around the back of the mall and come come out that way so things like that but you did get out we got out yeah you know what yeah. happened to me <laughs> I had a car, a little itsy bitsy teeny car in Italy, the first time I went, <laughs> and I went up into one of those little villages, and mm -hmm. I didn't understand that I thought I was supposed to turn, and I went and turned into a parking lot that was on a steep, 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 steep hill, and I oh, couldn't, no. I couldn't get out, and so finally, after trying for at least a half an hour, maybe longer, somebody came out of one of the apartments and took, got the car out of there for me. Oh my God. <laughs> Because I, exactly was, it. you know, you're in a stick shift on a steep hill, and there's all these, and it's so tight, 
and yeah. I couldn't even back up. And I was just, oh, yep. it was, I was so stressed out. And I and was meanwhile, like, everybody's honking. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I was so lucky. That guy came out and moved the car. He finally, oh got, you know, gosh. he lived there, so he was more accustomed yeah, to, right. to doing that. But uh, yeah, then I'm like, I don't want to go into those little towns, but sometimes you just don't have a choice. You just, because yeah. they're, they weren't meant for cars. Right. They were built in, you know, 1100. Yeah. There were no cars. <laughs> So, see, you know what it's like Except driving for, an RV, and that was like the <laughs> tiniest little car I've ever been in, and yeah. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get out of there. Yeah, that's, thank God for nice people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we've had to rely on other people. Kindness to, of strangers exactly. sometimes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need that. Oh my God, yeah, um, yeah. So, so what was I going to ask you? <laughs> so, so what about processing? I mean, are you processing on a laptop, and isn't that a bad idea? Uh, well, I have a laptop, but I have a, a monitor, a separate ah, monitor for editing, right? Okay. So the so our um, dining table is really a desk, and so when we're sitting, you know, not moving, I have my laptop and the monitor set up there. Plenty of space. It's oh, like a desk. Okay. And um, um, then when we're traveling, what I do is I take the monitor face down and put it on the bed. And the laptop goes in a you know a little case, and and everything is is on on the bed, right? So it's nice and soft, and and uh, and everything's safe there. Okay. So then when we get to a campground, I have to pull all that out and set it all up, and and I'm ready to go. So, other than just having to take it down and set it up every single time, it's really no different. Not that big yeah. deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So I have my monitor and. I have my calibration system that I use, and, and it's good. The only problem I have, and it's not really a problem, but um, you know how Adobe Cloud wants to update oh, all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, so I have to have good Wi-Fi to be able to do that. And um, so, but that, That's true. Yeah. I wonder if you unhooked your internet service, or not service, but you know the Wi-Fi thing, mm -hmm. Would you, the cloud wouldn't come up, try to. I can still right? use Photoshop. It's still on my. I know, but you yeah. have to keep closing that thing until, because it pops mm. up, right? The cloud? Yeah. No, it doesn't have to. You can, you, you put your Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever bridge icons on your um, desktop or the tab, and you don't, you don't need Wi Fi to open those up. No, I understand that, but the thing trying to get you to download the updates. Oh, yeah, that's right. So but, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi. But it doesn't pop yeah, up that. Right, I guess right. it just pops up once and then you close kinda it. kind of does it in the background. Because okay. I opened it up um, when, when we got back home and it was already starting to update. You know, so it, How do you back up your pictures on the road? So I have two um, hard drive, uh, external hard drives. And uh, I actually, we have a, a safe. Um, it's like a fireproof safe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that uh, I keep one of the hard drives in there. And if I remember, I download onto it, you know, keep it updated. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's kept safe if anything were to happen. Like if we were to get into an accident. Um, I thought about that. You know, uh, tire blowing, you know, things like that can happen. Um, yeah, I could lose, lose all that, <laughs> right? I could lose my monitor, everything. So good insurance. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I have, I think about that stuff and the, you know, I mean, I can replace my monitor and the laptop, but the photos I wouldn't be able to replace. So I make sure that I have something that, that I know is safe. Yeah. And I've got some, you know, in the cloud as well, but, but, uh, um, but yeah, that. But the I, cloud, if you ha don't have good connectivity, you can't really use the cloud yeah, for right. backup I, until you get back here or something. And right. do you have internet way out there in Chokoloski? <laughs> I do. It's not the best, but I, believe it or not, I do. <laughs> it, you know, sometimes it's slow, but it, it's yeah, we're we're okay there. I tell you, that's Isn't one that thing I didn't I don't like about Italy. I, I have never had good internet in Italy. Really? I, I wanted to interview Stefano as a remote and. We just do couldn't do it. The internet. That's interesting. It, everywhere I've ever been. Even in the city. Everywhere I've ever been has had bad internet. No kidding. So I don't mm. understand that, but mm. that's maybe I'm just cursed. I don't know, but <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's been it's Wi-Fi cursed. Bad. We're all Wi-Fi cursed. I yeah, think maybe I don't know. <laughs> it's always an know. issue. When all it, right. So what what else do you want to ta tell us about photography on the road? I, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, 
for you know everybody listening I think is a photographer right I would think and um, traveling I know people when you get the travel bug it's really becomes addicting um, and so if you have the luxury of, of traveling for the purpose of your photography um, you know if you're a nature fine art photographer uh, you you know you don't have to go very far first of all I mean there are places I, I could spend all my time in northern Florida and and be perfectly happy but um, you know just I people we know a lot of photographers that travel the way we do and uh, we have friends who uh, both of them are photographers so they have that luxury of having a common goal um, but if you are going to travel and uh, you know travel photo photography is not first and foremost um, you know just uh, kind of figure out is this going to be a portfolio building thing or am I just going to have fun traveling and um, if I get some good pictures great if I don't that's okay too okay uh, figure out what it is that you're wanting to get out of that um, but uh, I you know for me uh, traveling in unfamiliar places has really been stimulating and is kind of taps into your creativity I think and you can bring it back home and um, hopefully maybe it'll help my photography here yeah. um, but uh, uh, yeah I just I think I think traveling with a camera is, is just an awesome way of you know learning photography and and building your photography portfolio and and you know just having a good time with it I, I think you know because we get accustomed to the type of photography like we don't have any hills right but we have beautiful clouds yep. in the summer and whatever we get used to the way we yeah. what we have to photograph here yeah. so when you go somewhere with Someplace mountains different. and hills or or like forests where it's all like how do you find something when you don't have vast open spaces exactly. like we do you know <laughs> yeah I mean that would be I think yeah. really a good exercise for you to I totally agree and, and that yeah that's kind of how I approached it and I you know I'm not not a photographer who chases icons I mean I I can't wait to see Glacier Park and t the Grand Tetons and all of that but that's not what as a photographer I don't want to just take another picture of the Grand Tetons that we've seen a zillion others yeah. just like it yeah. you know you want to do something that brings your own creativity into that and so um, so it's a challenge in that regard but um, but I, I I'm you know if somebody said oh next year you're just gonna sit in Ohio for five months I think I'd probably be okay there because I could find something to photograph there's some beauty there and you went, might not think it, but uh, Ohio, yeah. but it's well. Some... I, I tell you, there's. I'm, I'm trying to remember the park that somebody. I don't know. The National Park, it. the Cuyahoga National no, Park. No, there's some park that some photographer I follow puts pictures up, and it is the so beautiful yeah. with waterfalls and yeah. every. I just can't believe it. I want like, like I want to go there. I can't remember you. what it is, the, but I'm sure there's spots like that in every state and every yeah. country and every you know probably yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So. And that's the advantage of road travel is you can see those things. You know, you could be passing through areas and think, well, maybe we should stay here for a while or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's places everywhere. You know? All right, let me ask you about cost. How expensive is it? Um, I mean, now, do you own that, tr that your home free and clear? Or do you pay the RV? Yes. Um, yeah. We, uh, because we sold our, our real home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we were able to do that. But so that you don't have a mortgage or anything like no. that. So you don't have to worry about that. People who travel in RVs, whether they're photographers or not, um, they'll they'll choose to stay in one place for a length of time. People will go to Arizona, for example, and and spend their whole winter there, and they may spend at a campground if they're staying for a long period of time. It's it's less expensive than if you're just kind of moving from one place to the other. So, for example, we may pay thirty five forty dollars a night for a campsite for a few nights, but if we stay for an entire month. Um, it might be like five hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, so okay. it's cheaper than rent, right? Yeah. Here in Naples, but um, uh, you know, so people will do that for long periods of time, and it becomes cheaper for them to do that. 
But if you want to travel and, and see the country, it's, it, it costs, if you want a dollar amount um, for this trip, it cost us about $1,000 a month for our campgrounds. And um, those were, what you, would you call, full hookup? We had a lot of, most, about 60% of the time we had full hookup, which means we had the electricity, the water, the sewer, okay. everything, right? Okay. And Wi-Fi sometimes, uh, most of the time. And then uh, we, uh, I mentioned Harvest Host, that was maybe a, a small percentage of the time. Okay. And then we had other campgrounds like our state parks. Um, most of the state parks will offer uh, electricity. Um, and in uh, water, sometimes you have full hookup, but sometimes you just have electricity. Okay. Those costs anywhere from twenty dollars to forty dollars, okay. depending on where you are. So just to give people a sense of of what the camping costs. Um, now that's with a big RV. If you have a small RV, you can go to more primitive campgrounds and pay less for okay. that, right? Um, gas, yeah, you're going to be traveling and not only are we pulling a fifth wheel, which means we get less gas mileage, right? But we, when we get to a campground, we want to explore. So we put a lot of miles on the truck and um, uh, Pennsylvania uh, diesel costs a lot more than it does in Florida. Mm -hmm. So you have to account for all of that stuff. Um, maintenance uh, got a little more expensive than I expected as well because we're putting miles on the truck. You got to have more oil changes and fuel filter, that sort of thing needed to be replaced. Uh, the RV needed maintenance. So yeah, there's you, you have to really kind of go into it with an open eye uh -huh. on what, what is going to be involved and try to figure ways that you can get around some of those costs. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, traveling's not cheap, you know. Yeah, you know, it's, it, although I'm yeah. pretty cheap. Ah. Yeah. But yeah, I like to yeah. do like a nice luxury trip or a budget trip. I'm sort of in there like one or the other. Right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same here. Yeah, we love having our home with us. I mean, that's the luxury of it is that we can go to these beautiful wilderness areas, go explore, get dirty, get muddy, get wet, and come home every night. You yeah, know? that's pretty cool. So you get that that you know that's gonna that's gonna cost you to be able to do something like that. But um, it's it's really worth. That type of traveling is, is just amazing. Now, do you keep this, is it a camp? Where do you live here? Is so in Chukaluski Island, there's a, um, an RV uh, park where we own, we actually own the oh. pad that it sits oh, on. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so that, we bought that years ago. And um, that was like, it's a lifestyle. Always remember these things. It's a lifestyle investment. You're not investing in a home. You're investing in a lifestyle. <laughs> okay. Because that RV is not going to uh, appreciate like your home does. Right. You know. So, um, uh, but we do own the lot, which makes it uh, relatively inexpensive for us to stay there. Okay. So, yeah. and then you don't have to pay for it while you're gone. Exactly. Well, you do, but the electricity and water we have to pay for, but. but and, and the maintenance, there's a maintenance, maintenance fee. Maintenance fee, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's nothing compared to what we were paying living in Miami. Oh, I can so, imagine right? in a real condo with the, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the other thing I would just say just to your listeners who, who are thinking of doing this type of traveling, and especially if you think you want to live full time in an RV is to, you know, people will say always have an exit strategy. You know, what if this happened? What if somebody got sick or you couldn't travel anymore and this is your home? Um, always have some kind of a, a way out of that. And um, uh, we're not really thinking about that too seriously right now, but, um, but it is something that, you know, a lot yeah, of people Yeah, because when you encounter. start getting older, you're not going to be mm -hmm. able to be doing this. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, it, it's not... Yeah, and we know people out there traveling who are in their 80s who have been doing it for decades. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's amazing the people you meet out there. Yeah, and a lot of photographers out there doing this, so. And that's kind of yeah. cool, you meet other mm -hmm. photographers too. Yeah, all the time. Did you meet, well, we don't really have time, but tell me, did you meet any other photographers that you kind of hung out with at all, or? Um, yeah, it's, except I couldn't really spend a lot of time with them because people, you know, you kind of cross paths and that's it, but, but yeah, there were a couple of um, people in the, a uh, couple of the parks that were photographers and we just kind of hung out together and, 
Um, but we were always wanting to go sightsee or do something. So, you know, uh, so it happened every once in a while. But yeah. Yeah, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah, it's a bonus. All right, so what, what's coming up for you? You've got some art shows coming up? Yep, got it. Um, already will be at Art in the Park in Naples, uh -huh. uh, December 7th. And um, I think. Um, I think my next one is, is in Miami, the Bow Arts in Miami in January. And then I'll be back in Naples a few more times in the spring. And um, Is your schedule um, on your website? Uh, not yet. Uh, <laughs> I, have I, know to, I haven't yeah. had time to attend to that uh, since I've been back. But yeah, I got to get that up. But I do, I do post on Facebook a lot, and I'll always announce things on Facebook. But this show is not live, so maybe you're, it, you're, there's some incentive. You'll have your website updated yeah. by the time this goes live. Goes Absolutely. And always check out my Facebook um, because I do, I'm more updated there than uh, the website. But and what are, what's your Facebook and what's your website? Uh, uh, you're talking about the address. <laughs> My website is is Constance Meyer Photography, and then uh, the the um, uh, uh, photography from a canoe is my uh, Facebook page. Okay, yeah. and and we will have the show the links in the show notes on understandphotography.com. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also I'm I'm doing workshops, and the way I do my workshops, people contact me, and we set up an itinerary specifically for them. So I don't have specific workshop dates, uh, but I do schedule Private. workshops um, based on the end of it. I customize them. There you go. And then um, I'll be, uh, I'll be um, uh, judging at the, uh, the Rookery Bay uh, photo contest coming up. Okay. I'll be doing that in January. And then uh, Naples Art Association, I'm offering a bird photography workshop through them as well. Awesome. So um, I think that, I think I got it there. That's what you're doing. Sounds like, yeah. a, sounds like a busy winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, not as busy as you, but. <laughs> yeah, well, when I retire. <laughs> Boy, that's the third time you've said that today. Because <laughs> I'm jealous because you're the I same know. age as I am. <laughs> I know. No, well. Even, even you went younger into, by a few months. <laughs> you went into the wrong business, that's what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. No. That's life, 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 life. So, all right, to our audience, you know, um, Connie brought up northern Florida quite a few times in this interview, and we still have openings for our Apalachicola trip with Joe Fitzpatrick. Um, that's in, oh gosh, I don't even remember when it is right now because it's not on my list. I wasn't supposed to talk about it, but I think it's in the spring. Anyway, check it out. It's, um, we, it's called the Forgotten Coast because it's old Florida and it is really, really cool in that area. So check that out at understandphotography.com. Check out some of Connie's work. She'll share some of our, her pictures from her trip. We'll be in the show notes at understandphotography.com. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching. We will see you next week. Yeah.